Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I'm joined by my esteemed co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Uh, and today we are interviewing the passionate Giacomo Zucco. And Giacomo, before I ask how you're doing, I'll do my best to introduce you to our audience. Um, so Giacomo is an educator, entrepreneur, speaker and writer. Uh, and Bitcoin maximalist, I think it's fair to say. How are you doing, Giacomo? How's things going? I'm doing fine, thank you. I'm uh, still in Switzerland right now, but ready to travel again a little bit this summer, which is something I'm not doing as as uh, as much as I used to, so I'm quite happy. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to getting uh, getting out, I guess, out and about. I think, uh, I think we can all share that, uh, <laughs> that sort of want and desire. Um, so yeah, I guess, um, well, I've got a few things I wanted to, to talk to you about today and, and ask. Um, but I thought a good place to start would be um, kind of with uh, our RGB protocol, actually, um, as that's something that I know, well, essentially you're a big part of behind and, and obviously you're knowledgeable about. Um, and I figured there's probably a fair few people uh, in the audience who probably haven't, maybe haven't even heard of it or don't know much about it. Um, so and it's something that I discovered earlier this year, I think. So I'd appreciate if you could uh, give us like a little kind of, uh, explanation or a rundown of the concept um, just so that people out there listening can know what we're on about before we then go on to talk about you know different bits about it um, since sure. you're probably the best guy for that. <laughs> Gladly. So the first thing is a disclaimer. Uh, I am quite uh, knowledgeable about the initial idea because I was there when we produced the idea. So the general concept, the original concept is also part of, uh, uh, I, have, I had a part in developing it so I, I can justify it. The current development, of course, is something else because there is actually people writing code all the time and, and open source project, they take a direction which is, uh, uh, which is more close to the ideals and vision of people actually writing the stuff. So my vision of RGB that I will communicate now may be even a little bit restricted if you compare with what uh, the current developers like Maxine Morlowski or, or others are actually doing, which may be even more complex and uh, multifaceted. Uh, for me, it was basically like this. I had a client back, uh, it was just before uh, building on Bitcoin in Lisbon. So it was probably 2017 uh, or 18. I don't even remember. Basically, I basically had a client who uh, asked me to review uh, a token scheme for uh, some kind of token stuff. And my review was twofold. One was about the economics of the token. And I said it didn't make any sense. And I still stand by that. And I, I really cannot find many uh, schemes that make sense for so-called tokens, except for a very, very small set of exceptions. And um, the other part was uh, explicitly on the ERC20 over Ethereum architecture that had a lot of uh, criticalities in, uh, in our opinion. So we give this response and uh, the client said, okay, Let's assume that we have need for a token and we just disregard your opinion against it, at least about the architecture. If you have all this criticism about ERC20 uh, standard and you seem unhappy with uh, counterparty and Omni and, and colored coins, what is an actual design that you would actually uh, kind of uh, mm, suggest for a token scheme? Uh, if, you see that, if you say that ERC20 doesn't make any sense. So we hired the Peter Todd and uh, uh, back then there was also Ricardo Casata now is working on BDK. Uh, so a couple of developers and we, I'm not the developer myself. And we designed a protocol, mostly starting from Peter Todd's idea that I will now try to explain it a bit, which is uh, basically an idea that starts with Bitcoin, not with tokens. So uh, in Bitcoin right now you have node, full node, validating the rules of any kind of transaction graph you receive. When I send you Bitcoin, your node will check that signatures are, are, are correct, that, the, that there is no inflation, that the amount of, of Bitcoin you burn in the inputs is less than the amount, sorry, is more than the amount you, you of UTX so you create in the output. So that, uh, that every block has the right rules, et cetera, et cetera. So you validate this. What miners do in theory is not validating again. In theory, they are just uh, uh, placing a cost to rewrite the history. So they are just creating a chronology of valid transaction. Validation is your responsibility. And miners are creating basically just a chronology of valid, uh, of valid transaction. 
The idea about Peter Todd is that it would be actually more efficient for privacy or scalability if miners didn't even bother checking the validity and they could just mine whatever. So blocks with even invalid transaction in, in between just everything, miners will just be charged to commit scarce resources, so energy and work on one version of the history. And then you will not be trusting them to keep validity rules enforced. You will just have to enforce validity yourself. And basically the idea will be when I pay you some Bitcoin, I will have to provide you a full chain of proofs from the origin from the coin base of signatures and scripts and stuff. I will send it to you off band. You will verify it off band and miners will just uh, uh, build block with the ashes of uh, the, the transaction just in order to make them non double spendable. Of course, there will be some complexities about the fee uh, management, but the idea will be miners will just build a history without any concern for what is, is, is included in the history and people will just uh, transmit peer to peer the validity history of Bitcoin. This will be have, this will have some advantages, uh, scalability, of course, a little bit, not much, but, uh, but sub substantial and also privacy, especially because uh, the public blockchain will not actually include any um, particular um, uh, detail, sensitive details about the transaction. They will just include these hash commitments and then within you will just receive peer to peer uh, the, the transaction, which will be closer to what happens with, I don't know, physical gold. There is better fungibility. I, I will just give you a physical gold bullion. It's not that everybody has, has to know it. You will just know it because I give it to you. And, uh, and this minor structure will just be needed to avoid double spending and that's all. So Peter had this idea for Bitcoin. Of course, it will not be possible to change Bitcoin to go like this because it will be too disruptive. But he said, if you want to do a token, like if you want to do a color a coin kind of project, uh, this is interesting because color a coin already is client side validated because you, uh, the mine, like if you think about counterparty or Omni, these kind of meta protocols, the miners are not supposed to know what is the token logic at all, unlike in Ethereum. So it's better this way because in this way we can actually do a client side, we cannot do that for Bitcoin yet. Maybe someday we will do it with some kind of side chain pegging or something. But right now, if you really have to do a token, at least don't use the public blockchain to put their data that cannot be validated by miners anyway. So uh, like in counterparty, if I send you uh, a, a token, I will write the transaction of the token and the script and everything. And I will write that on the public Bitcoin blockchain, which is a waste because uh, uh, miners, of course, uh, will ignore those uh, internal uh, protocol rules, so these meta rules. They will just publish whatever uh, valid Bitcoin transaction, even if it contains an invalid uh, counterparty state change. So they will just publish everything and uh, you will just have any way to, um, to check yourself. You will, just, uh, you will just use the blockchain as uh, some kind of uh, paste bin public uh, data repository, which is a waste uh, for a blockchain, which is actually way more expensive and way more problematic. So uh, the idea was uh, just uh, do the token stuff, the token issuance, give the token information to your party, which is receiving, and just commit in order to avoid the spending to this transfer on a public blockchain, which a technique similar to open and stamped, a little bit compli more complicated. Uh, Peter called it a, a single use seal. So basically you, you, you close a single use seal on top of the transaction and the blockchain only includes the seal opening and the seal closing and not all the data. Of course, this design has a major drawback, a major problem, actually two. One is you have to keep backing up all the uh, off chain data yourself and your seed is not enough anymore to recover your tokens because if I send you a token, I also send you a chain of proofs, which is not very big, like it's, it's a way smaller than the amount of data we are transmitting right now over Zoom. It's smaller than a typical WhatsApp uh, or Telegram vocal memo. So it's super easy to send uh, from the point of view of, uh, uh, of uh, data bandwidth, but you have to store it because if you lose that, uh, you will lose all the tokens. You cannot just use your, uh, your Bitcoin seed in order to recover everything like you do on Bitcoin. And the second problem is 
you or your trusted counterparty or some trustless counterparty with some very complex design must be online in order to receive a payment. You cannot just give me an address and then go away because I need to reach you somehow to give you all the off-chain data. In Bitcoin blockchain, you just send an address, then you disconnect, you go to the jungle for three years, then you reconnect and you receive the Bitcoin. With this client-side validation, you need to stand there and, and actually receive my, my, pack, my, my package of uh, my payload of data in order to validate. And these were actually two drawbacks that were uh, actually um, uh, used as a counter, uh, as counterpart, as criticism of the design, as drawbacks of the design. But then uh, in, when we were discussing this, Lightning Network was just about to come on. And Lightning Network is interesting because it's much needed, it's useful, it works, it's the, the way forward for scalability, but it does have exactly the two same problems. You cannot just use your Bitcoin seed to keep your, uh, your Lightning Network uh, um, your Latin network funds, you need to keep a backup of all your current state of a channel. Even worse, you don't only have to not lose the backup, you have to keep it secret because if you, uh, if you leak some uh, past uh, uh, channel states, somebody can actually broadcast it to, to punish you and to, stall, to, to, to steal your, uh, your stack in the channel. So you have to keep them and keep them secret. In RGB is simple because you just have to keep it, but not secret. And also you have to be online in Lightning, not just to receive, but also periodically to check that you're not being scammed. So you have to be online uh, every time you receive and also frequently just to check on the channels. In RGB is simpler. You just have to be online in order to receive and not anymore to check. So the, the UX challenges of Lightning are even worse than the UX challenges of client side validation. So we said, uh, let's just leverage the Lightning Network infrastructure. The client-side validated data will be transmitted over Lightning like an extra payload of a Lightning payment. So we will reuse the fact that the Lightning nodes already have to exchange data. We will use that uh, to pass over the client-side part. And we will leverage also uh, backup strategies of Lightning in order to backup also slightly modified in order to backup also your uh, client-side data. Uh, data. And um, we, we said, so basically we said, we can use Lightning a solution to Lightning challenges to also solve every kind of challenges of, of this kind of client-side validator design.